Welcome back folks, Jalen Bio here. Today we are going to be focusing our video um, on oxidation numbers and redox reactions. We talked a little bit about this last year. This is very similar to how you determine charges, um, but what we're really going to focus on is electron transfer. That is, how do we know when electrons are transferred in a chemical reaction? What do we identify those particular species as? Um, and how to identify oxidation numbers in chemicals that maybe we haven't taken a look at yet. So strap yourselves in, guys. It's going to be an exciting ride today. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to understand how electricity is created, uh, particularly with using chemical reactions. You should also be able to determine the oxidation number for any element in a molecule or compound. And you also should be able to identify elements that are oxidized or reduced in a chemical reaction. So quite a few vocab terms here. The key things to keep in mind would be oxidation, reduction, electron transfer reactions, oxidation number, and uh, the concept of redox reactions. So when we talk about this, I want to take a little bit of a step back and think about the concept of electricity. And all electricity is is the flow of electrons. So think like water through a hose. Water flows through a hose. Um, and electricity can flow through a variety of different wires, cables, things like that. Now, the term voltage refers to the rate of the flow of electrons. Think like water pressure. You know that... Um, Different pipes and hoses have different water pressure. Well, the voltage refers to the same thing. Different chemicals um, can result in different levels of voltage. So when we talk about electrons and oxidation states, it's important to understand that some reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one thing to another. In fact, most chemical reactions do. Uh, these reactions, though, interestingly enough, can be harnessed to create electrical flow. That's actually how a battery works. And so we'll talk a little bit about how we harness the energy of a battery in a unit later on. These are known as electron transfer reactions. Now the oxidation number refers to the difference of electrons gained or lost from a neutral atom. We've seen this, this particularly when we look at ionic compounds. We've talked about charges, right? The, the first group is a plus one charge, meaning that it has lost an electron. Or group two is a plus two charge, meaning that it's lost two electrons from the neutral state. Well, interestingly enough, this can occur in both ionic and covalent bonding. And so it's important for us to be able to determine this information um, so we're going to do some practice problems and show you a couple different ways in order to be able to do this. So how do we assign oxidation numbers? Well, the first thing to understand is if it is ionic, it's simply the charges. Okay, plain and simple. If it's an ionic compound, the charges that we've talked about previously are going to be the oxidation numbers. However, this is not always the case, particularly when we look at covalently bonded compounds. So in order to do this, we follow these steps. Number one, draw out the Lewis structure. Two, determine the normal number of electrons on the atom in a neutral state. Three, lone pairs on the Lewis structure belong to the atom they are attached to. Bonded pairs belong to the atom in the bond that is the most electronegative. Okay, think closest to fluorine, or you can always use an electronegativity sheet. The difference between the normal number in two and the counted number in three determines your oxidation number. A little bit confusing, but when you see it in practice, it's really not that difficult. All right, so we're just going to do a couple practice problems here just to make sure that you all understand exactly what's going on here. The first thing we're going to do is assign oxidation numbers. So in order to do this, first step, draw out the Lewis structure. Okay, so hopefully I remember how to do that. We've talked a lot about that previously. Okay. Next thing is to determine the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So if I look at my periodic table, oxygen, that's a nice little table here, typically has six. Same with the other oxygen. And carbon typically has four. So we need to determine uh, the number of electrons that are attached to each individual atom in the Lewis structure. Now remember that lone pairs belong to the atom that they're attached to. Bonded pairs belong to the atom that's the most electronegative of the two. So if I take a look here on this oxygen, I have two lone pairs right there. Okay, So that's four. And we have two bonded pairs that are here. Now those are going to belong to the oxygen compared to the carbon because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Okay, So this oxygen has eight electrons and it's going to be the same over here. You've got two pairs here, two bonded pairs there that oxygen owns, so it will be eight electrons and carbon now has zero attached to it. Okay, So we take a look at the difference here. Oxygen originally had six electrons. But now it has eight, so it gained two electrons, so its charge, or its oxidation number, is two minus. 
Same with this oxygen here. It has a two minus oxidation state. Carbon here, however, is a four plus because it lost all four electrons. So those are your oxidation numbers right there. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's take a look at CH4. Again, same concept here. We draw our Lewis structure. Each hydrogen has no two, has one valence electron, and carbon has four. Um, no lone pairs here, but if you look at the electronegativity difference, uh, all of these bonds are going to belong to the carbon. So what we end up with is carbon having a total of eight electrons and each hydrogen having zero. So carbon gained four electrons, so therefore carbon is a four minus and hydrogen is a one plus, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna do the last example. I think you guys get it pretty straightforward, but again, the key thing here, make sure you draw your Lewis structure, determine the number of uh, valence electrons that are present in the neutral atom, determine how many they are in the Lewis structure on each atom using the rules that we previously discussed, um, and then figure out how many each individual thing gained or lost. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's move on. Now there are a couple shortcut methods that we can use here. Uh, the shortcut method is kind of just a list of rules to remember that the oxidation state of neutral atoms is always zero. Oxygen is almost always a minus two. Hydrogen is almost always a plus one. Remember the mine almost always, that does come into play here. Uh, alkali metals are plus one, earth metals are plus two. And also keep in mind that the sum of oxidation numbers must be the same as the total charge of the molecule or ion, okay? Um, so do kind of keep those things in mind. Let's do some practice with the shortcut method. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got a uh, sulfate ion, SO4 with the minus two charge. So if you remember going back to our rules, and the main rules that we're gonna need to remember are oxygen's minus two and hydrogen's a plus one. It makes life a whole lot easier to go through and figure these out. So we've got SO4 two minus, okay? Well, we don't know S. There's not a specific rule for S, but we do know oxygen, remember? Oxygen is a minus two. So if that's the case, and there are four of them, then I have a total charge of eight minus on my oxygen, okay? So I need to assign the oxidation number for sulfur. Well, if I know that uh, S is unknown, we'll call it X, and we're gonna add to that negative eight to get negative two, then the charge on S has to be a six plus, okay? So it just ends up becoming a math problem. Remember, the total sum of the oxidation numbers has to equal the charge of the entire molecule. So pretty straightforward stuff. And H4, you have ammonium ion. And we don't know H. I'm sorry, we don't know N, but we do know H. H's are typically plus one. Um, we have four of them. So that's going to be four. So again, just using a little bit of algebra here, what plus four equals a positive one? So here, nitrogen is going to be a three minus, and hydrogen is going to be a one plus. Okay. Cr two O seven. Oof, a little more complex here. So Cr two O seven. Right on seven, Joe. Seriously, seven. There we go. Uh, two minus. Again, we don't know chromium, but we do know oxygen. Two minus. So we're in it with minus fourteen here. Now remember, we want to know the oxidation number on each chromium atom. So here, we're not going to add x, we're going to add 2x. Okay, so do a little bit of math here. You find out that each chromium is a 6 plus. Oxygen, again, 2 minus, and you're good, okay? So it's just trying to figure out those oxidation numbers, and that's going to be really important when we try to go through and determine what is oxidized, what is reduced in a chemical reaction. All right, let's move on. So when we look at chemical reactions where oxidation numbers change, that's known as a redox reaction. This is really important to know these two things, is that oxidation is the losing of electrons. Reduction is the gaining of electrons. I always think Leo 
GER, LEO, L-E-O. Losing electrons oxidation, GER, G-E-R, gaining electrons reduction. Okay, so what we need to do is analyze the oxidation numbers of the species in the reaction to determine if electrons are gained or lost. We'll talk about oxidizing and reducing agent a little bit later on, but if we take a look here, zinc goes from Zn to Zn2+. So you have to ask, did it gain electrons or lose electrons? Well, in that case, it lost electrons, right? It goes from a neutral charge to a plus two, indicating that it lost two electrons. So therefore, we say that zinc is oxidized because it lost two electrons. Copper goes from a plus two to a neutral state. It gained two electrons. So therefore, we say that copper here is reduced. All right? So a couple more practice problems, and we will be done. Determine the species being oxidized and reduced in the following. So we take a look at these. All pretty straightforward here. Now, the first thing we need to make sure that we do is we write our oxidation numbers for each thing. So if you look here, iron, anything by itself it has no oxidation state. So zero and zero. We take a look at this right here, Fe2O3. You should know how to determine the oxidation numbers for this. O is a minus two. Fe here, plus three. So iron goes from 0 to a plus 3, and oxygen goes from a 0 to a minus 2. Let's start with iron. Iron goes from a 0 to a plus 3. So did it gain or lose electrons? It lost them, right? This lost 3 electrons. Remember, Leo Ger. So what we say is that iron is oxidized. Oxygen goes from 0 to minus 2, so it gained electrons. If it gains electrons, we say that it is reduced. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's look at the next one with um, a combustion reaction here. Nice little happy combustion reaction. Okay, so here we have CH4, so H's are plus 1's. So C has to be a minus 4 here. This O here is neutral. Uh, o here is a minus 2. Same here, minus 2. This is a plus 1. So this has to be a plus 4. So again, we need to take a look at what changed oxidation numbers. And again, if you can't do the oxidation numbers that quickly, that's OK. You'll practice with them and get really, really good with them. Promise. But if we take a look here, hydrogen did not change. It stayed a plus 1. Carbon went from a minus 4 to a plus 4. And oxygen went from neutral to minus 2. So minus 4 to plus 4, did it gain electrons or lose electrons? Carbon lost actually quite a few electrons, to be honest. It lost 8. Um, it went from a minus 4 to a plus 4. So carbon lost electrons, Leo. So carbon is oxidized. And oxygen gained two electrons, GER, so oxygen is reduced. Again, pretty straightforward, okay? Practice makes perfect with this, so we'll give you some practice problems a little bit later on. Hope you learned everything you needed to from the video. Remember, um, hopefully you understand a little bit about how electricity is created. You're able to determine oxidation numbers from any element in a molecular compound, just like what we practiced. And then also identify elements that are oxidized or reduced in a chemical reaction. I appreciate you guys' time. Have a great day. Make sure you like, subscribe. Don't leave a comment down below because I'm turning those off. So we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.